Hi, good morning. That was a tough act to follow. Um, before I begin, I just want to make a small disclaimer. Just bear with me if I get really short of breath. I'm breathing for two people, myself and a very small four-month-old, so it gets, it gets tricky. Thank you. That's the problem with women entrepreneurs. We're always looking for the next startup, right? This is the ultimate one. <laughs> So, um, at the end of last year, a very unlikely group of, of uh, people, nurses from public hospitals, were able to force Congress to treat a bill that made better conditions for them. And they did this without going on strike and without taking on the streets. The way they did it was they uh, benefited from an open source platform called Democracy OS that the city of Buenos Aires was experimenting with. Democracy OS is an open source platform designed for citizens to get informed, to debate, and to vote how they would like their representatives to vote. So instead of voting once every couple of years, we could now organize and vote per issues all the time. A lot has been said about how the internet disrupted the culture, disrupted economies, disrupting sciences and education. But very little has been said about the innovation, or I would like to say the lack thereof, of innovation in the political system. So from a couple of years ago to, to this day, we've been seeing a lot of movements in society that are taking on the streets, right? In many countries, in Spain, in Europe, in Argentina, in Brazil, in France, in the United States, instead of, and these are all democracies, all these citizens have access to the ballot boxes, they can vote, but they still feel the need, they need to take on the streets in order for their voices to, to be heard. And the most important thing that political institutions are, or the key, the fundamental element of political institutions is to build trust in society. We trust political parties to aggregate our preferences and forward them up to their um, leadership, for the leadership to make decisions that affect our lives. Right? We trust central banks enough to literally exchange pieces of paper full of stamps and signatures with one another right? in exchange for goods and services. And institutions like the, just the judiciary system or the police are designed to mediate trust in society. Well, maybe that's me, but I have the feeling that Trust in the political system is broken. We seem to be moving towards a completely different model for government, but we have no idea what it is or what it should look like. The word apathy gets tossed around a lot, even more when it relates to the younger generations. Voter turnouts are in historical lows. And I don't think there's one reason why this is happening. I don't think that this lack of trust in society where we just have the feelings that our governments are simply no longer able to respond to our demands and our only solution is to either not vote or to take on the streets to protest. So there is not one particular reason, but let's consider this. Our representatives in Western nations average between 0.0003% and 0.001% of the voting population. That doesn't seem like a lot, does it? Again, maybe it's just me, but I have the feeling that Governance, it's something that someone else is doing in our name, whether we want it or not. 
And it's not like we really have a choice, or it doesn't seem like we have a choice. So if in political institutions have the fundamental role of building trust in society, I think the primordial question that we need, we need to ask ourselves, if we do not trust these institutions anymore, then who do we trust? There has to be an alternative for this system that we have now that we've inherited on which we simply abdicate our right to govern ourselves, to decide for ourselves during four years at, at a time, right? And the sort of the classical um, alternative that um, gets presented to the representative democracy is the idea of um, direct democracy. But I think that direct democracy is a highly inefficient and very suboptimal institutional arrangement. And there's another institutional arrangement that we can think of where we can challenge the notion of representation. And this is the concept of liquid democracy. So clearly, it, it, it seems a bit sort of binary that the alternative to outsourcing our citizenship during four years is voting all the time on every issue. There's, there has to be a better, more intelligent way of thinking about it. Even more with the technology that we have at the, now. So, liquid democracy is a highly dynamic institutional arrangement for representation where if you do not feel comfortable voting on a certain issue, you can delegate that vote per issue on someone that you trust. And, but you never lose ownership of your decisions, of your power. So if, for example, I know that you know a lot about the environment, so I can delegate on you all issues, that, all votes that have to do with the environment. And I delegate on a practitioner that has been working for 35 years in a public hospital, my vote on healthcare issues. But I want to keep for myself all votes that relate to gender issues, for example. And then I do, I know, I trust my elected official, so I delegate on him or her votes on all other matters. But what's important here and what's key is that the vote is always mine. I can always get it back. And that's a way of thinking representation in a completely different way. Thinking representation as a horizontal emerging arrangement. And think about the consequences that this could have for, for example, for lobby, right? Because going back to the nurses in Buenos Aires, the capacity that they have or they had to influence Congress was minimal. They don't have lobby, they don't have sway, they don't have clout. But what if a lot of people, as it happened, would delegate on them the vote to regulate what happens in public hospitals? They would have a new and unforeseen leverage. It was amazing seeing this conversation that we were able to create between a group like the nurses, elected representatives, and the rest of society. So using technology, we were able to put in the middle of the congressional agenda um, an issue of a group that was normally on the fringes of society. So this idea of allowing for an emerging social leadership, of thinking of representation not as a territorial kind of representation, by a horizontal representation that is based on knowledge, it's based on trust, gives us new elements to organize the way we decide to govern ourselves. Obviously, a system that is, let's call it in decay, or the old system and a new system, Firstly, they must um, cohabitate, right? So what we need to think about is, okay, we have this amazing or new um, decision-making platforms. 
we pair them with a highly dynamic and emerging concept of representation, but we need to find connectors between these technologies and the political system. Because technology by itself is technology. It's not going to do the trick, right? What we need to know to find is um, those actors in the existing political system that are able to rethink and use these technologies in a completely different way. And novel political parties seem like a really good place to start to think about how we can experiment with this new governance, with these new institutional arrangements. So in Argentina, this is one example. What we did was we founded our own political party called the Net Party. And the objective of this party was we were going to run for elections and try to hack the political system. So instead of trying to add pressure to the system, what we tried to do was how we can really have impact on the system. So we did what we were supposed to do. We founded a political party, we ran for elections, we went through the whole judiciary madness of doing it, and we radically changed the way a political party makes its decision. We pledged publicly, that's us over there, um, we pledged publicly that we were always going to vote in Congress according to what citizens decided on this online platform. Now, it wasn't an algorithm making those decisions for us. It was a way of empowering, of enabling citizens to make those decisions. And so we said, yes, we're going to run for elections, but we are going to change the way we make decisions. And the Partido de la Red is just one example. There are really good novel political parties in Europe, in Chile, in the United States that can become these bridges between these new technologies and the political system. We just need to experiment. We just need to start innovating. Okay, so we have the collaborative decision-making platforms. We have a new concept of representation. We have a political system that is translating this directly into the system as a transition. But we still are missing something that is very important when we think about governance. And that's an, one of the key issues of uh, trust is accountability. How we're going to bring accountability into this system. <coughs> Sorry. So I was very happy yesterday to hear a lot about the blockchain and smart contracts. Because I think that these kind of protocols, like the blockchain, for example, are really interesting protocols that can help us bring this accountability to this system. Right? But just imagine if we could, for example, write publicly on a, on a public ledger like the blockchain the conditions on which we are delegating these votes on one another. So the empowerment that that means, and that also means that anyone, absolutely anyone, without asking for permission, can count the votes, can see the interactions that are happening in this new system that we're building. We're actually making this system much more transparent and accountable. The, and I think that as the internet goes towards being the infrastructure on which organizations of all types are being created, these collaborative decision-making platforms paired with a liquid democracy um, idea and built on top of decentralized or distributed networks like the blockchain that make them highly accountable and transparent can really help redesign our institutions in the 21st century. And just to wrap up, if you go back with one idea, please let, let it be this. We are not bound by the institutions that we inherited. We collectively own them. It's up to us to decide how we're going to govern ourselves. Democracy, it's, it's a work in progress. 
the day it stops being a work in progress, it's going to stop being a democracy. Thank you. <laughs>